or shall I say, bonjour! Welcome to Partners in Wine. I am your host, Chanel Carroll. And if you can't tell today by how I'm dressed, we're taking you to France. And to help us on our tour of the wines of France, we've called in the cavalry. Please welcome my good friend, Guillaume Marconnet. <gasps> bonjour, Guillaume. Bonjour, Chanel. Now, a little bit about Guillaume. Guillaume is from France. He's from a city right outside of Lyon, which is the food capital of France. And this man eats, drinks, and lives wine. And he grew up in a vineyard, okay? So he probably has wine running through his veins instead of blood. So let's get talking about some wine. Let's say I know nothing about French wines. Where do I go? How do I start? I'll try to make your life as easy as possible, okay? Love you it. know that France is very complex with a lot of different uh, wine regions. Mm -hmm. So I picked the three main ones, let's say. Okay. okay? Burgundy. All right. Bordeaux. Gotcha. And Rhone Valley. Ah. And I'm sure even if you don't know anything about wine, you heard of mm -hmm. uh, those regions already. So let's start with this one. This one is the Burgundy. Okay. It's a 100% Pinot Noir. Ooh. It's called Volnay, Premier Cru. It's a 2013. And Domaine Glantonnet. Domaine Glantonnet. Glantonnet. Glantonnet, okay. Is a very, very uh, prestigious uh, winemaker. Okay. In this region. So let's check this. So, what I learn is always from the top to the bottom. Okay. So, you, we start with the eyes, we go for the nose, and then we're going to end with the mouth. So, the yeah. eye, check yeah. the color. You see that it's very, very clear, mm. not that purple, yeah. huh? light. light. When you turn the, uh, the wine in the glass, you can see the legs that they are pretty thin. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now legs, for those of us at home that don't know, what does that mean? Legs is uh, the alcohol and the sugar in the wine that stays on the side, on the glass, mm -hmm. and then go down slowly. Yes. This one, we can see like thick legs mm -hmm. huh? it's pretty yeah. light so we can already say we did not know uh, we, sorry we did not smell mm -hmm. we didn't taste but we can tell it should be a pure noir yes already. then one step uh, down the nose mm. what do you smell Chanel? Hmm. i smell cherry plum Plum, mm hmm And a little bit of wood. Yes. Huh? That's because it's aged in French oaks. Ooh. Wood barrels, all right? Gotcha. And then the most interesting step is the last one, mm -hmm. the mouth. The mouth. So you have the nose coming mm -hmm. back. Mm hmm And the same flavors like plum, cherry, you have raspberry coming now. Yes. But some people that they are not big uh, wine drinker, let's go for a Pinot Noir. You can go wrong. If you are invited to a special party and you don't want to disappoint them and to bring something they don't like. It goes with everything. All right, so we're gonna move on to our next wine and you guys might remember this wine from the first episode. We are talking about a Chateauneuf de Pop and this wine is very close to Guillaume's heart so I'll let him tell the story. Thank you, Chanel. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, Chateauneuf du Pop, I have to say, it's, I think, my favorite wine in the world. You can't have a favorite wine because they are all different. Like the one we, the, we just tried is really good for happy hour, like I said. This one is more like when you're eating poultry, um, like duck, squab, mm -hmm. quail, you know. And But the wine itself, the story around the wine, it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, it's bringing us back like three centuries ago, four centuries ago. I'm not very good with my history, but... <laughs> What I have to say is that the king was the first power in France, um, in Paris, and uh, he used to drink a lot of Champagne, which is the, the sparkling wine from France, and uh, the Bordeaux for the, for the red wine. And uh, at the same time, we got the second power in France, um, at the same level, I mean, um, as strong as the king, uh, it was the Pope, the Catholics. And the Pope was in Avignon, on the Rhone Valley, on the Rhone River, and uh, maybe he was jealous, who knows, he decided to, to pick a village close to Avignon to, to make this village the only one able to provide the wine for the, <clears throat> for the Pope Castle, and he decided to pick Chateauneuf, 
which is the name of the village, and he renamed it Chateauneuf du Pape, which means, for you guys, very easy, New Castle of the Pope. There you go. There you go. And if you check the, the bottle, you can see that you have the Pope hat and the keys of the castle. What? Did you know that? I did not know that. You see? That's why I love that one, because it's such like... Uh, a lot of different stories, a good reputation, a good taste. It's the most complex wine of France. We are talking about 17 different grapes in that bottle. You remember? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, a little darker than the first one. Yes. Okay. Not that deep though. The legs are a little thicker. Yeah. Now let's smell, take a sniff. Chanel, talk to me, talk to me. Mm. Again, deep, deep red fruit, a little bit yes. peppery. Exactly, mm -hmm. deep, that's the right word. We were on cherry before yeah. and raspberry, now we are talking about blackberry. Blackberry. Uh, you see? And now let's try. Yeah. It's well balanced. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's a little heavier. Definitely uh, would go well with some duck, like you were saying. Now my mouth is watering for duck. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so we've talked about Burgundy, we've talked about Chateau de Pop, and now we're on to the last one, Bordeaux. The most famous area yes. uh, in France, I think. We are talking about saint emilion It's the right bank of, uh, of Bordeaux. Uh, saint emilion is also uh, known as uh, one of the most beautiful villages in France. I'm talking about the architecture, the houses, the church and everything. So you have a general picture. When I'm going to my tables uh, at the restaurant, I like to talk about the wine itself because people have to know what they're going to drink. But I also like to give a picture of what they're going to have mm. in the glass. So let's say, you know, France is famous for that. I mean, you have the famous picture, like the little houses all around, oh, yes. the church in the middle, mm -hmm. some cows everywhere. Yeah. You see what I mean? Chickens. If you like chicken, <laughs> let's go for chicken. But yes, no. So this, this saint Emilion is the VH you have on the picture. It's like... So what? this is a postcard. Po thank you. Million. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I'll use it tomorrow at the restaurant. It's okay. a postcard of France. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's try So we are talking about Cabernet Merlot, mostly. Cabernet Franc a little bit. They are heavy grapes from, uh, from, uh, from Bordeaux. Uh, check out the color. So remember, mm -hmm. light. It's the deepest. Deep purple, but like most like dark pink. Now we talk about also, I mean, almost black. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Tobacco, leather, berries Very. again, but and maybe some like apricot, but dry apricot. Yes, you know something like uh, dried fruit. Yes, dried fruit. Oh. Look at the legs as well; they are much thicker. Now we are talking about something very heavy. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. And it's a wine that gets in your tongue very dry, so you need more. Yeah. And more. Yeah. <laughs> and more. Okay. You see? In short, you will go through this bottle very quickly. Also, to talk about parties and stuff when you're invited, I was saying that if you don't know exactly what to bring because you don't know the people, go for Pinot Noir, you can, do a, you can make a mistake. On the other side, on the other hand, if you have some wine connoisseur and you want to impress, impress them, them. Mm -hmm. you pick a Bordeaux. So thanks again to our special guest, Guillaume Marconnet. And Guillaume, you know, before we go, I just want to circle back to what I was talking about earlier, you growing up in a vineyard. Can you talk yeah. a little bit more about your childhood and how that influenced your love for wine? Sure, no problem, with pleasure. Um, the story is just, I mean, my grandpa uh, used to, to grow wine and uh, every summer, uh, I, go, I was going from Lyon to, to the vineyard to spend the, the holidays and uh, 
with my cousins and we are all playing around you know the cowboys and the indians like uh, mm -hmm. when you're a kid and uh, the main rule was you can go in the vineyard to play between july and september it's like forbidden but like big time and my grandpa was a tough guy trust me so uh, that's the story and one day with my uh, older cousin we decided to to break the rule and go to the vineyard it was uh, middle of august to uh -oh. play yeah, uh -oh. <laughs> and uh, and my grandpa saw us from uh, his house and he opened the window and with his gun he started to shoot not at us oh god <laughs> my, my grandpa is not that uh, crazy but Oof. no you know in the air just to to make a to scary scare, like and, a warning and, shot and, yeah exactly gotcha. a warning shot and um, and uh, so yes we ran out like right away and we I, I was crying my cousin was crying we went straight to my mother by the way my mother got in a big fight with my grandpa at that time because she was like uh, are you kidding me you tried to to, to you, kill my son yeah. and, you know mm -hmm. and uh, so it was a big story long story short uh, two years three years I, I i haven't been back to the vineyard you know but i was wondering why he made such a big deal of mm. me playing in the vineyard and I came back to him and like, hey, uh, grandpa, what's the deal? And at that point, my grandpa took me uh, with him and he's like, let me show you something. And then he brought me to the, to the shed, that's the place where we make wine. Mm -hmm. And he started to explain me, so this, look, this is the grapes, this is the, how you make wine, this is it, this is it. I was three years older, so I was uh, maybe around like seven, six, mm -hmm. seven years old, you know. And I got my first zip of wine at that time and uh, I understood what this red liquid was finally and starting that day i decided to make the wine my 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 passion my life and my career and that's why i'm here with you today i guess chanel that's it wow what a great story well cheers to that to thanks my crazy grandpa to your crazy grandpa <laughs> and cheers thanks for joining see us next time